In this section, we're going to look at circles. First, we'll write an equation of a circle in standard form, and then write the equation circle in general form. So first off, what's the definition of a circle? It's the set of points in the plane that are equidistant from a fixed point and that fixed point is the center and the distance that everything is the same distance from is the radius so the radius is the distance from the center The standard form of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And this is where the center is equal to the point h comma k and the radius of the circle is r. So there's a couple of things to observe here. First off, notice how the standard form of a circle is related to the distance formula, and which is also, you know, comes from the Pythagorean theorem. But if you notice that the definition of a circle was the set of points that were equidistant from a fixed point, the fixed point being the center, and then the radius is that distance. So all we have here is the x's squared and the y's squared, and then that's equal to the distance squared, which was the first equation we wrote down for the distance formula. So the uh, formula for a circle just comes from the distance formula. Example one, find the center and radius of the circle x minus four squared plus y plus three squared equals four, and then graph it. So first off, notice that in the standard form of a circle, it is written as x minus h squared and y minus k squared. We need to write it in the form with negatives so that we can see exactly where the center should be. The first part is done exactly as needed. It's x minus 4 squared. However, the one with y is not quite in the standard form. It's y plus 3 so in order to figure out where the center should be with respect to the y, we need to write this with minus signs. So it's y minus negative 3 squared. And then the 4, I'm going to write that as 2 squared. Now it's written exactly in the standard form, and we can peel off the center. The center is going to be 4 comma negative 3. And then the radius is the positive number that was being squared, and that is 2. We need the radius to be positive for it to be a circle. Now to graph it, I'm going to start with the center, even though the center is not part of the circle. And I want to graph that so that we can see where to graph the rest of the circle. The center is at 4 comma negative 3. I'll graph that in purple, and then the circle itself will be in blue. To graph it from the center, we're just going to go out two units to the right, to the left, up and down, and then connect it with the best circle we can. So two over to the right, two over from the left, two up, and two down. And then draw the circle.
in example two, we want to write the equation of a circle centered at negative two comma zero with radius 10 in standard form. So we have the center is negative two comma zero and we have the radius is 10. So this would be x minus the x coordinate for the center, which is negative two quantity squared plus y minus zero quantity squared is equal to 10 squared. We're gonna simplify this a little bit. It's customary to go ahead and write it with pluses and remove the zeros when you see them. So we have x minus negative two. We're gonna write that as x plus two quantity squared. And in the right side here, we have y minus zero. That's gonna be written just as y squared. And then of course, 10 squared is 100. In example three, we want to write the equation of the circle whose diameter has endpoints three comma five and six comma seven. So recall that the diameter is the segment that goes all the way across the circle. And so the center of the circle would be the midpoint of the diameter. So here we'll use our midpoint formula. The midpoint between two endpoints is just the average of the coordinates. So it's three plus six over two and five plus seven over two. Three plus six is nine, can't simplify that. That's nine over two. Five plus seven is 12. 12 divided by two is six. So the center of this circle is going to be at nine over two comma six. What about the diameter length. Well, to find the diameter length, we'll use the distance formula. So d is equal to the square root of 3 minus 6 squared plus 5 minus 7 squared. Simplifying, we get the square root of negative 3 squared plus negative 2 squared, which is equal to 9 plus 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. 13 is prime, and it doesn't simplify. So the diameter length is the square root of 13. The radius is half the diameter. So the radius is the square root of 13 over 2. Finally, to write the equation of the circle, we have x minus the x-coordinate, which is 9 halves quantity squared, plus y minus the y-coordinate, which is 6 quantity squared, is equal to the radius length, square root of 13 over 2 squared, and then we need to simplify this radius. So we get nine minus, uh, sorry, x minus nine over two squared plus y minus six squared is equal to 13 over four. Next, we have the general form of a circle. The general form of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus ax plus by plus c equals zero. Example four, write the circle x squared plus y squared plus four x minus six y equals 12 in standard form then identify the center and the radius. So in order to change the general form of a circle into the standard form, 
we need to complete the square on both the x terms and the y terms. So we're going to have x squared plus 4x plus blank plus y squared minus 6y plus blank is equal to 12 blank blank. We've grouped the x's together, we've grouped the y's together, and now we just need to complete the square to find what goes in those blanks. So remember we'll take half of 4, that's equal to 2, and then 2 squared is equal to 4, so we're going to add 4 to the first blank. Since we're dealing with an equation, we can go ahead and add 4 to the other side as well. As long as we maintain balance, we're okay. We, here we just added 4 to both sides. Let's complete the square on the y's. So we're going to take 1 half of 6, that's 3, and then 3 squared is equal to 9. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. Now we factor x squared plus 4x plus 4 factors as x plus 2 squared. And y squared minus 6y plus 9 factors as y minus 3 squared. This is equal to 12 plus 4 plus 9, which is 25. So from this, the standard form of a circle, we can read off the center. The center is negative 2 comma 3, and the radius is the square root of 25, which is 5. Let's look at the circle x minus 4 squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 10. Now remember that the standard form of a circle, as shown here at the top, is r squared on the right side. So here we have a slider that controls the value of r squared. Currently it's equal to 10. If I click on it and we start to decrease the value of r squared, the value of r, which is the radius of the circle, decreases as well. And you can see the circle getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now as the value of r squared decreases, we're going to decrease that all the way down until it is equal to 0. When we get to 0, the circle collapses on itself and it leaves a single point. That point is the original center of the circle. Here we have the equation x minus 4 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 0. So the only value of x and y that satisfy that equation are 4 comma 3, which is the center of the circle. So when r squared is equal to 0, r is equal to 0, we have no radius, and thus we have no circle. We have a single point. What happens if we continue to decrease the value of r squared to where it's negative? Well, then we have nothing at all. Since the left side of the equation of the circle is a square plus another square, we know that the left side would have to either be positive or zero. It can never be equal to a negative number. So if you have r squared equals a negative number, that's another degenerate case, and there is no solution set to that equation, thus there is no graph. Let's complete this list of the degenerate cases. If r squared is positive, then we do get the circle with radius r. r is the positive number. If r squared is equal to 0, then we get the single point. That, was the, that would have been the center if it had been a circle, but that is a degenerate case where r squared is equal to 0. It's the single point h comma k. And if r squared is less than 0, then the equation does not have a solution. So the solution set is empty, and there is no graph. 
it's empty because if you square two things and add them together, they can never be equal to a negative. Let's take a look at some examples. Example 5. Determine if each of the following are circles or degenerate cases. In part A, we have x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 0. This equation is already in standard form, and we can tell that r squared is equal to 0. That is a degenerate case, and so the solution set here is only the point 0, 3. That would have been the center of the circle had it been a circle, but it is degenerate. In example B, we have x squared plus y squared plus 8x plus 2y equals 0. This one is in general form. In order to determine if it is a circle or a degenerate case, we need to convert it back into standard form. So we'll complete the square. Grouping the x's together, we get 8x squared plus 8x plus blank plus y squared plus 2y plus blank equals 0, blank, blank. Completing the square on the first one, we get 1 half of 8 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. Completing the square on the y terms, we get 1 half of 2 is equal to 1, and 1 squared is equal to 1. So we have uh, plus 1 and plus 1 on both sides. Factoring, we get x plus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 17. So we have a positive number on the right side of the equation. So that tells me we do get a circle. Example C. We have x squared plus y squared minus 10x plus 50 equals 0. We need to complete the square on this as well. So I'm going to write it as x squared minus 10x blank plus y squared. There are no other y terms, so we don't need to complete the square on the y's. We have a 50 on the left. I'm going to move that over to the right as negative 50, and then blank, the one blank for completing the square with the x's. Let's complete the square. It'll be 1 half of 10 is equal to 5, and 5 squared is equal to 25. So I'm going to add 25 on the left and 25 on the right. Factoring gives me x minus 5 squared plus y squared equals negative 25. Because we have a negative on the right side of the equation, this is going to be a degenerate case. There is no solution. The solution set is empty. We don't get a graph, and we do not get a circle or a point.